Hi, welcome to Your Future, Your Finances. I'm your host, Brian Kuhn. Today we're talking about estate planning, getting your documents in order and making sure your life is mapped out uh, to your wishes. Today I'm talking with Rick Todd, business and estate attorney in Columbia, Maryland. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, give us your background, how long have you been doing this and um, specialties? I am. Uh, I do primarily estate planning. Um, I do a little bit of real estate law as well, um, a little bit of business, uh, but mostly estate planning. Um, my background is uh, I was in the financial industry, but from a marketing perspective, and I worked overseas, and then um, I transitioned a few years ago to uh, being an estate planning attorney, and I've, I've had a law degree for about a decade now. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it, it seemed like a natural fit because estate planning is um, – it goes hand in hand with financial planning, and uh, many people consider it to be the final piece of the puzzle, of the mm -hmm. financial planning puzzle. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's starting from square one, they, they go see you, they tend to not have any documents as most people procrastinate. So where do they start? Okay, well, if they come to me with nothing, um, I explain to them um, what I give them. So estate planning is generally a will. Uh, powers of attorney, and uh, in Maryland it's called an advanced directive. Mm -hmm. um, I also give a uh, final disposition, which means what you want done with your body after you die. Mm -hmm. um, and I also, if they have children, I give them a guardian nomination. They nominate uh, an individual or two individuals who are married um, to uh, be the guardians of their children in case uh, they and their spouse die. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, and that's the package. Mm -hmm. And uh, it varies, but most attorneys give the will, the powers of attorney, and the advance directive to a client. Mm -hmm. And then oftentimes it comes up, uh, the differences between a will or uh, doing what's called a trust. So what's the difference? Right, okay, so there's, there are many types of trusts. Um, the big, the big um, there's sort of a rivalry in the <laughs> um, estate planning industry. The rivalry is between giving uh, a client a will or a revocable living trust. Mm -hmm. um, a revocable living trust allows you to, they, they, they function this very similarly. Mm -hmm. um, you you uh, are able to take the assets of your estate and give them to your heirs, your loved ones. Um, and a revocable living trust allows you to avoid probate. A will um, does not. You go through probate. The probate process is, in brief, an administrative process that you work hand in hand with local uh, government. And um, they work with you to, they work with your loved ones to administer the estate, to uh, distribute it to uh, the people you selected. Mm -hmm. um, revocable living trusts are more expensive than wills. Mm -hmm. um, they're much more complex, and um, they oftentimes don't work. Well, I don't want to say they oftentimes, they sometimes don't work. Mm -hmm. um, because in order for them to work, you need to take the assets of your estate and retitle them so that the, they are transferred to the revocable living trust. Mm -hmm. Um, and with a will, you don't have to do that. You mm -hmm. just write a will. Um, so there's not, um, in Maryland, the probate process is so simple and inexpensive that there's really no reason to avoid it. Mm -hmm. um, that's not necessarily true in all the other states, but um, I feel it's true in the state of Maryland. Mm -hmm. And um, a will, there's also, um, it's hard to make mistakes with a will. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the other documents in the package. One of them is a POA or a power of attorney. So right. what sort of things are you are you answering or putting in writing in that document? Well, the powers of attorney, people are confused by it because they um, they think that it's part of, uh, it only comes into play when you die. Powers of attorney is, is for when you're still alive, mm -hmm. but you, are, you do not have mental capacity. You are incompetent. That's a, really a legal term, meaning that you cannot make um, basic decisions. So you have dementia, you're in a coma, uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so you, you've chosen someone to be your agent, and they can make financial decisions for you, and that can include uh, paying bills, um, and cashing out of a bank account, or moving stocks to bonds, things like that, mm -hmm. to control your finances, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, once you die, that document is, is, is useless. It's mm -hmm. worthless. Um, with the, uh, the uh, living will, or advanced directive, as it's called in this state, um, it, you, you're choosing someone to make medical decisions for you. And um, that means, and that also means not only making medical decisions for you, but also determining um, when you want care withdrawn. Um, to put it bluntly, when you plant the plug pulled, yeah, um, or uh, food and water withdrawn. Mm -hmm. And so I use for my clients, I use the um, the statutory forms, which have uh, blanks in them. But I feel those have more authority, or possibly more authority than um, a form drafted by an attorney. Mm -hmm. 
What happens if someone goes into the hospital and they don't have that form and their spouse is there? Can the hospital still communicate generally with the spouse? Generally, yes. And, the, and, and, um, and I think that they will, um, the spouse will be able to make medical decisions for, uh, for their spouse. But they won't have any direction unless they've talked about it in the past. So. Right. They won't have direction. And I think that this, uh, by having an, an advanced directive, you set out in stone um, exactly what you want done mm -hmm. uh, 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 if you become ill. Mm -hmm. And what happens if it's not a spouse? Then can they take any direction or guidance from someone if they can't communicate with that's a very good question, and I'll have to get back on you, to you on that one. <laughs> so that's why you would have the document, I guess, then. is Right, is and the document is a clarification. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, the will and the, the living trust, to get back to that, that used to be, or, or still is, I suppose, having to do with taxes, like avoiding taxes. Well, uh, the revocable living trust used to be um, uh, uh, used to avoid a, the estate tax, which is also known as the death tax. A lot mm -hmm. of people still use that term, um, but it's, a, it's the estate tax. Mm -hmm. Um, the revocable living trust does not offer any tax protection. There are trusts that do offer tax protection, uh, tax protection from the estate tax. They're very expensive. Most people at this time do not need to worry about the estate tax because it's for people who are extremely wealthy. Mm -hmm. That may change, and the estate tax used to be much lower, even as recently as the late 1990s. Mm -hmm. um, so it's um, while I say that you should not worry about the estate tax over time, it may ch that may change. Mm -hmm. So um, you should just be aware of that and you know watch the news. And if there is a change. Uh, you, you should contact your estate planning attorney. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to take a break. We'll talk more about business law, real estate law, as well as the book you wrote on uh, retiring overseas. That's an interesting topic for a lot of people these days. Uh, we'll be right back. You're watching Your Future, Your Finances.